The Bible talks about finishing our race and wrestling or fighting the good fight. If we're going to be successful, we need to be healthy. Laura Harris-Smith is a certified nutrition counselor and co-pastor. Her new book, Get Well Soon, will lead us on a journey to vibrant health. Laura, welcome to real life. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Do so, I get a fist bump from you, you as well? Me. Okay. <laughs> now, you and I had a little conversation, and, and I don't want to get into a lot of the detail of that, but you're native born to Nashville. I am. And uh, we had a connect there many, many years ago oh as goodness. a ball player and as a fan of the Nashville yeah, Suns. Yeah, yeah. So, very, very interesting. But, Laura, you uh, are a co pastor with your mm -hmm. husband mm -hmm. and are blessed to have wonderful ministry now in Music City. Yes, we are. And we love Nashville. It is a place where people come to fulfill their dreams, and often those dreams are dashed. You know, they come to Tonsil Town, as we call it. <laughs> um, and so, our church, Eastgate Creative Christian Fellowship, we have a lot of creatives there. Sure. And we have six children, and, you know, a lot of them are creative. And so, we just attract this creative culture even those who are involved in the, what we call the administrative arts. Maybe they don't think they're creative, but mm -hmm. you know, you need all of those to hold all these starving artists together. So sure. we're thankful for all of them. Well, your expertise, one of your many ex areas of expertise is the area of health. And yeah. I just wanna give some practical encouragement mm -hmm. and advice to our mm -hmm. viewers. Now, just to establish a premise for all of this, uh, our nation, the United States of America, we take probably about three quarters yeah. of the world's medications, mm -hmm. yet we're overweight and only about midway, if you measure by, by uh, different measurements of health, right. about midway in terms of health. So we're over medicated, yeah. but we're under healthy. Yeah. What's yeah. wrong? Well, what's wrong is that people are turning to the wrong source for mm -hmm. their healing. Um, God created everything we need for healing on the third day of creation. He made the plants, the rocks that have the minerals, the, the leaves that have the vitamins. He made all of this for us. And the farther we get from that as our remedies, uh, the farther we're going to get from health. So what happens is people start treating just their body. They go to the doctor, which I'm in the middle of getting my doctoral degree. I'm gonna be a naturopathic doctor. Mm. So I have nothing against doctors, no. but the issue is that if we just treat one third of ourselves and we don't realize we have a soul and we have a spirit, that's really my anthem is body, mind, and spirit. Because think about it, if we're made in the image of a triune God, you know, Holy Spirit, Son, and Father, you look in the Garden of Eden and the Trinity was already hard at work. He said, let us make man in our image. So you cannot segregate these three parts of yourself, body, mind, and spirit. And I think the reason we're so far off is because we're just trying to treat the body, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's interesting you're talking about, you know, uh, we have a creative God and yeah. I think there's a lot of creative things that go into mm -hmm. with our health, but we just sort of sure. push mm -hmm. it to the side. Mm -hmm. And what happens is <clears throat> a lot of times we wind up thinking, Okay, well then, um, let's say that I have a symptom in my body. The first thing I'm going to do is reach for something in the medicine cabinet instead of, yeah, it is a little bit creative. Like, <laughs> Lord, what do you want me to do? Yeah. What is tailor made for me? It could be that there was a stress or some strife in your life that opened the door. Oh my goodness, can we please say that there, scientists are now waking up to the fact that there are links between our emotions and physical sicknesses. Mm -hmm. They say that envy and jealousy is now a root of um, arthritis. Well, Proverbs tell us that envy rots the bones. And so these type of connections, if we would let the creator tell us his creative solutions for things, and of course, in our spirit as well, I really believe we'd see health manifest more in our bodies. Laura, just as a, a way of a personal testimony, uh, I've actually been studying my sleep. Lucy and I have Good. been studying our sleep since October. And it's been really enlightening Powerful. what God has blessed mm -hmm. us. And, and we use a, a, a principle, an axiom that we call 10, 3, 2, 1. Ah. The, and, and our sleep has grown exponentially. <laughs> We're sleeping soundly for eight to nine hours an evening. And, and it's important. just, it's really changed our lives mm -hmm. because that's how important the good restful sleep mm -hmm. is. But what we do is, uh, I'm not a caffeine drinker. Uh, Lucy occasionally will have tea or, yeah. or coffee, but that you don't have caffeine 10 hours yeah. before you want to fall asleep, mm -hmm. that you don't eat three hours before you mm -hmm. want to fall asleep, 
you don't exercise two hours before yes. you want to fall asleep, yes. and you don't uh, look at li the, the blue light emitting light. things right. one hour mm -hmm. before you fall asleep. That's right. What are some some things that you've learned mm -hmm. about how we can enhance our sleep? Well, let me just say as a personal testimony that six years ago, I almost lost my life mm. because of sleep deprivation. Oh, I can lay down and sleep eight hours every night. But it wasn't that I couldn't sleep, it's that I wouldn't sleep. I'm a writer, I'm a pastor, we've got all these children right. and grandchildren, and I love what I do, and it's really hard to set boundaries. So I was getting about four hours sleep a night, and I'd wake up and do it all it over me. again, and I found out I was on the brink of adrenal failure. Sure. And adrenal fatigue or adrenal burnout, uh, stage four is when all of your organs shut down. Mm. And I was in stage three before I discovered I even had it. So I was told make changes or die, went on total bed rest, and I am convinced I'm convinced that sleep study doctors could put all the other doctors out of business because if your sleep is intact, and I still have that propensity I towards, agree. I'm telling you, my mom can do it, my dad can do it, Albert Einstein did it, so I wore it like a badge. <laughs> I can sleep for four hours and do whatever I want to do, and I still can if I'm on a project or whatever, but, but typically I try to get eight hours every night, and you are spot on. Mm. Our biggest is that one at the end right. where if we are on our phones or even in bed reading our tablet, what happens is the light hits the optic nerve, which right. tells the pineal gland to shut down the production of the drowsy hormone melatonin. So that's that's a key one right there. Mm. Thank you, thank you. That's very good. I'm, I'm good for you. <laughs> I wish everybody could grab a hold of that. Because I think that's something we have lost in our society is yeah. rest. Yeah. That's so important for mm -hmm. our bodies to recharge. Because I worked at a job where I was, my body schedule was so off and I, I right. started to notice like I couldn't breathe or right. just certain things that were going on. Well, what I tried to do and get well soon was to break down the 15 body systems and because a lot of people don't understand, you know, we have our nervous system, our circulatory system, our cardiovascular system. I give them each their own little piece of real estate in the book and there's over 200 healing prayers for just about anything that ails you. You can turn to our alphabetized infirmity index on in the back, flip over to your prayer and read it. But in case you're one of those who says, well, I'm, I'm already pretty healthy, I just want to maintain I'm most excited about the part that I put on each of the, the front of those 15 chapters, a body system blessing. And I speak over you and each intricate piece, I mean, very medically accurate, uh, detailed blessing over what should be happening in that part of your body. And there's a link in the book. You can just go to the video and I just do it over you myself. Laura, talk about that component yeah. that, that we, we don't do these health and nutrition things in a vacuum, mm -hmm. but that literally it, it grows exponentially. There's a yeah. synergy when we do that in prayer and yeah. committing that our efforts to God. It is exactly what the rabbi said earlier. Wisdom begets wisdom. Uh -huh. And so when you first just tap into these basic principles of I'm going to treat my body like the Holy Spirit, that may be all you know, like it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. Then all of a sudden you wake up one day and you think, you know, I need to drink more water. He starts whispering to you little things <laughs> that you can do. And then yes, you want to hear his voice more and then you find out you're praying more because you have to communicate with him more. He is the great physician. And so mm. if we will just spend more time nurturing our spirit, then I believe that so many of the issues in our soul, which is the Greek word psyche, you know this, it mm -hmm, means, it mm -hmm. means our mind, will, That's and emotions. Right. That's right. That will become more whole as will our bodies. So they're they're interconnected. I literally don't believe you can segregate them. Not and be whole. That's right. Laura, yeah. years ago I, I met a, a man that had lost 250 pounds. Whoa. And every year he would take a walk from Vineland, New Jersey. He was a pastor at an Assembly of God Church in Vineland, New Jersey. Would take a walk, kind of a pilgrimage, down to uh, Wildwood, New Jersey, that's where we met. And, and he would do this walk to just draw attention to the importance of being in good health. And I remember wow. when I was talking with him, he said the little axiom that he lived by, if God made it, I'll eat it. But if man made it, <laughs> I won't. And he said that he was killing you know. himself with a knife, a spoon, and a fork. Oh, yeah, we're burying ourselves with our forks and our knives. Nutrition. I call it living food and dead food. Mm. So you, the, if you'll just think about it like this, the perimeters of your grocery store where there are the plugs and the things that need to be refrigerated, that. So, you know, with these six children that I have, we used to laugh that, so all five of them, it caught on and they were reading it. But I had this one child, okay, his name is Jude. 
he's now 23 and doing really well, but he, it was like turning the Titanic around. He would walk into the kitchen and my pantry was here, right, which had still a little bit of dead food in it. Everybody has a few boxes, but all the living food was over here at the refrigerator. <laughs> he would walk into the kitchen, turn left, lean against the table, open the pantry door and just wait for something to jump out. You know, <laughs> now he comes in, he turns right, he either grabs some fruit or vegetable or whatever salad. I'm so proud of him, but it is just making the tiniest of changes and wisdom will beget wisdom. I just love that. <laughs> and Laura, you know, I feel like nowadays, you know, there's so many documentaries on Netflix. I know my husband yeah. and I, we were like, oh, let's try to go vegan or do this. Yeah. But where do we have like the balance? What would you say are like, okay, this is the certain things you yeah. need to look for, for, you know, the living and the healthy mm -hmm. foods and not to totally go mm -hmm. overboard. And then you kind of go back into your old ways because you try something. Well, that's the thing. If you can make it a lifestyle, and I don't think I can answer your question by saying it's the same for everyone. There are some people who have a propensity in their family towards heart issues mm -hmm. or brain issues or blood sugar issues. And so maybe that person with a blood sugar issue is gonna eat maybe lower carbs. Uh, but I just, again, I believe that if you'll go to the great physician, He's going to write you a prescription. Sure He's going to motivate you every morning as you spend time with him to be able to follow that through. He's going to give you the grace to follow it through. So my message all along is you've got to get your spirit aligned first. You've got to understand that he is your heavenly father. If you've never received Christ as your personal savior to get you to the father, you're going to be totally cut off from all of this wisdom we're talking about today. So that's the first step. Get in right relationship with him and he becomes your father, your doctor, your counselor, everything that you need. One last question about um, what I would consider the triad, getting proper rest, having proper nutrition, is proper exercise. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone that's, that's, that's watching the <laughs> You're program? You're asking about? a very sedentary writer, okay? <laughs> so, um, so I always tell people you need to get moving more. My lifestyle is such, especially when I was studying for my degree and I just finished writing a patent for an essential oil blend that I have and, mm. and the whole thing with writing, I have to be very intentional. So on right. this side, so I'm just saying, if I can do it, this is something you can do. On this side of my bed, literally as I step out, is a, is a treadmill. It matches my bedroom it, it's so that it doesn't like stand out and look awful, but I have to trip over it to get out of bed. <laughs> On this side is my bike desk. It's an exercise bike desk. Mm. So when I wrote Get Well Soon, I put in 90.1 wow. miles. Good to write for it. you. So Good just, for you can you. incorporate it. And I still need to do better, but I'm just saying you can incorporate it into everyday life. You surely can. You know, I just <laughs> always like to say that I can't wait to get to heaven but I don't want to go there before God calls me home. Oh, yeah. So we want to be in good health. That's exactly. I had one person tell me one time, if I eat this or eat that or eat pork, or does that mean that I'm, I'm going to go to hell? And I said, no, it absolutely doesn't mean that you're not going to be in heaven. You might get there sooner, <laughs> but it doesn't mean you won't be in heaven. <laughs> Laura, thank you so very much. And we, we just pray blessing upon this portion of your ministry you. and, and also the work that you're doing there in Nashville with your husband, had a chance to meet him. Thank, thank you. you so very, thank very you much. We really appreciate that.